Today, we're gonna be talking about what I consider to be the best AI app builder out there. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar about this channel, I'm not always pushing the latest AI features. I tend to focus on where we can see the most value for our clients' projects by saving time and efficiencies through the use of AI. Now, you might not have heard of this application before. It's called Frontly.ai. It's based in Canada, and it got its start on AppSumo. Frontly lets you build applications for your team using Google Sheets as a backend, and now they offer Supabase as well, which allows you to create a much more scalable backend. And coming soon, they're going to allow you to use Airtable as well. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. There's three main different applications that we're going to be talking about with AI. The first is going to be the general onboarding or creation experience of your app. The second is being able to design your own custom blocks with AI. And the third way is creating your own custom actions with AI as well. So let's start off by building a new app. And from here, we're going to create with AI. So let's start with a really high level example. We're going to have it create a residential real estate listings page. We'll press submit. And from here, it's going to determine which tables or spreadsheets that we need for our backend data. In this case, it's just a single table that we need of these listings. On the next step, it's going to determine what fields it thinks we need. And this is a pretty good start. So for our listings, we're going to have an address, price, number of beds, baths, square feet, a listing date, an agent name, and a status. Here's what I really like about their AI features is that you can add feedback to this. So instead of just putting in the prompt and it generates everything and you don't get the opportunity to give feedback or to influence it, here we can simply add a new field we want to include. Let's call this one neighborhood. Next, we'll generate some sample records. And now you can see it actually generated this sample data on our behalf. So we have our fields, we have the table of our listings, and it's put in some sample data. So as we're building our app, we can actually utilize that data in the app itself. Let's go on to our pages. In our case, this one's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to have this single page of listings. And for our page blocks, it looks like it's going to create property listings, a listings table, and a listings map. This sounds good to try. And here you go. We're previewing our app and what it recommends. So it's got a map. We've got some listings here in these cards. And we have a listings table. Now, would I use both of these? Probably not. But this is pretty awesome that it could actually determine the blocks or components that we need on this page. So let's go ahead and finalize this app. So now you see we have two options. We can actually preview this app or we can open the editor itself. So let's go into the editor. And I like the basic layout of this, but I probably want something a little bit more visual for these individual cards that I have. And so in order to do this, we can use the second way of utilizing AI, which is to create our own custom blocks. Now, like many other no-code tools, when you add blocks, you've got several different ones to choose from that are out of the box but you can also create your own custom blocks. And this is what makes Frontly so powerful. So here we're going to actually create our own block and generate that block with AI. I'm gonna paste in a description here. So we'll tell it to create a real estate listing block that's three columns wide. And then we've got some other attributes here like the price and the beds and the baths. And so let's go ahead and try this out. This is something that I'm not writing any kind of technical language. You don't need to be a developer to do it. Let's see what it spits out. So let's check it out. If I scroll down, you can see we have this new block. It's a little bit more visual in nature. We've got a placeholder for an image. We've got the price. It's got all the pieces we've added. We could probably add a description or something that would take up a little bit more room, or maybe we'd want to try specifying the dimensions. I'm not sure what that would do. Here, we've got a little place where we added an icon for favoriting this. So let's see if we can change that ourselves. And let's search for something like a bookmark. I like this. So let's give that a try. And then we could begin the process of wiring this up to our data inside of Google Sheets. Now, the really cool part about this is, is if I like this component, I'm like, yeah, I did the work of wiring this up and I've got my images and all the attributes that I need. Now I could save this as my own custom block. I could simply go to more and then click save as custom block and we'll give it a name and a description and we'll save this. So now let's say we were creating a brand new page or application. We could click on new page and let's call this one my favorites. And then instead of creating that block again from scratch, I can just go to add blocks and start searching for real estate. And here we go. We've got my real estate listing and I can pull that in. So this is where I think Friendly is getting way ahead of the curve. There's a lot of no-code applications and they come with very rigid structure in terms of here are the 10 blocks that you can choose from. And then there's low-code tools that are like, sure, bring in your React components. 
but this is a no-code way of creating your own composable blocks, and I absolutely love it. For our last AI use case together today with Friendly, I'm going to talk about how we can create our own custom actions using OpenAI. And believe me, I have seen dozens upon dozens of different wrappers around ChatGPT, and while this effectively does the same thing, we're able to actually take the outputs of what we're doing with OpenAI and map it to our web application, and that's what makes it super powerful. So let's preview this app together. This is one that there's actually a template for already. So let's test out this functionality together. This is going to generate a blog post, but this whole blog post generator and editor is an actual Frontly app. It's not a CMS for Frontly. This is just an app built in Frontly. So let's go ahead and generate. And you can see it generates a blog post for us, both with a title as well as the actual body of that blog post. And then if we want to, we could open this in our editor and this is actually mapped in all the information. We could make changes to it if we want, save that and then publish it again. But that's not the coolest part. The really cool part is that we can wire this up how we want. So we could have multiple different fields of information come back save that to our database and display it within our web application. We're storing our data in Google Sheets right now. So let's add a new column to this called tags. And then back in Frontly, we're going to go to our data sources and we're going to refresh our data source. And now it recognizes that fourth column. Then let's hop back in our generator and we can click on the generate button. This is what we have the action actually attached to. So if we go into more, we can check out this submit action. And this is a custom action that we've created. You can see that we can actually add multiple different steps. If we select the step type, you can see there's a number of different navigational ones. We can update our local state. We can add different delays. We can refresh the front end. There's a lot of really powerful stuff here that we don't see in a lot of other no-code application builders. So the first step that we have is our open AI request. And you can see that it's got the prompt. But this is the cool part. It's where we have the response object fields. So if we added this new field here and we called it tags, then I'm going to tell it to give me a comma separated list of topics for this post. Then in the next step, we'll write this data into Google Sheets. You can see we're already doing this with our topic, title, body, and then now we have tags added as well. And then we'll update our local state and we'll have that point to our tags as well. So let's go ahead and modify the preview for this and we'll just change it to have title. And just for this example, we'll add a hyphen here and we'll use our local state and we'll use those tags and we'll insert this. Now let's preview our app again. We'll input a topic and press generate. And now you can see it's created our blog post again. Here we have the title and it's generated this series of tags. Now blog posts and tags, that might not be of interest to you, but it's this kind of functionality that lets you build your own AI web application because you're able to take different inputs, pass it in to OpenAI, and then take that information back, save it to a database, update something, show it to users on the screen. And that's what makes this wrapper of OpenAI so much more powerful than many other implementations that I've seen across different web application builders. I hope this has been helpful to see just how powerful of a tool Frontly is for building your web applications with AI. If you have any questions about your own automations or applications, don't hesitate to reach out to our team at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.